Last week, Boeing unveiled its concept that will compete to replace the SR-71 Blackbird. According to Aviation Week, via Popular Mechanics, the hypersonic aircraft will reach speeds above Mach 5 using a combined cycle engine with elements of a turbine and a dual ramjet scramjet. The aircraft looks similar to Lockheed's SR-72, which was reportedly seen at the company's Skunk Works facilities back in September. Lockheed may be ahead of the curve, as it reportedly had a demonstrator aircraft while Boeing is still showing off models. Boeing's Son of Blackbird concept hasn't been approved for full-scale development, but according to Kevin Bowcutt, chief scientist for hypersonics, if and when it's approved, it will likely be a two-step development process. First, it'll have a single-engine proof of concept that is about half the size before it tests a full-scale vehicle that is going to be about the same size as the current Blackbird. Cut! Next story! Engineers at the University of Connecticut have created a biodegradable pressure sensor that could help doctors monitor conditions like brain swelling, heart disease, glaucoma, and bladder cancer before it dissolves into your body. The small sensor is flexible and it's designed with materials that are already FDA approved for other medical procedures. The hope is that the sensor could soon replace current implantable pressure sensors that are made of potentially toxic components. Current sensors have to be removed, which is not only means another procedure for the patient, but also increased risk of infection. The sensor was designed to give off a small electrical charge when pressure is applied. This feature could make it suitable for tissue regeneration. The prototype is made with a thin polymer film that's five millimeters long, five millimeters wide, and only 200 micrometers thick. The researchers implanted the sensor into the abdomen of a mouse to monitor respiratory rate. It provided reliable readings for four days before breaking down into its organic components. They also tested the sensor's safety by implanting it into the mouse's back. The mouse suffered some inflammation, but it was back to normal after four weeks. Still difficult looking at a looking at a mouse with a big old slice down its back. Yeah, that's a hard image. But we're sharing it together. The engineers have filed for a patent and the application is currently pending. Next story! This is the Ripsaw, and its own makers at How and How call it the most obnoxious vehicle ever made. It might also be the subject of the most obnoxious video ever made, but this thing was made to chew through all terrains, from sand dunes to snow-covered hills. According to the company, the Ripsaw EV3 F1 has a 1500 horsepower, 727 cubic inch Hemi, which makes it run, quote, like a rocket ship on tracks, with a floating air suspended cockpit for a sole rider inside of a tubular exoskeleton. The company does have the F2 and F4, which seat two and four passengers respectively. It has 112 inches of military grade track on the ground and is made out of aerospace grade steel, aluminum, and composites. How and How actually designed it using high performance OEM truck parts to help make maintenance and upkeep a little bit easier. The F1 weighs 7,750 pounds and it can reach up to 75 miles per hour. And if it looks familiar, you may have actually seen variations of the vehicle on the big screen in the new Mad Max, Fast and Furious 8, and G.I. Joe 2. So if your action sequel or reboot needs a little muscle, I mean, I, I guess you know who to call. How and How isn't exactly known for its subtlety. The company's Bulldog 4x4 fire truck was named World's Most Badass Fire Truck by Maxim in 2015. The company also designed a number of tracked robots for the military, as well as the Thermite Robotic Firefighting Solution. I mean, this company just doesn't mess around. 75 miles per hour on that thing. I just need to try it. I just need an hour of your time and sand dunes. Like an hour of your time and some sort of open track because I'll, I'm gonna hit something. I'm David Manti, this is Engineering by Design.